Welcome to part three of Fujifilm Optical Devices Division Binoculars Guide video series. I'm Tom Calibro, Director of Marketing and Product Development. If you haven't watched the first two parts of this series, you may want to take a few minutes to catch up on the basics. With that foundation of binocular configurations, types, and applications, you'll be ready for our discussion on how binocular lenses operate. We'll begin with the exit pupils. To locate them, simply hold a pair of binoculars at arm's length and look for the disks of light that appear to lie on the surface of the eyepieces. The exit pupil is the virtual aperture in an optical system. It's important because only the light which passes through it can enter your eyes. So, all other things being equal, the larger the exit pupil, the more light will be delivered to your eyes, providing greater brightness. To calculate the exit pupil of any binocular, take the effective diameter of the objective lens and divide by the magnification. For example, a 7x50 has an exit pupil of 7.1 millimeters as you divide 50 by 7. An 8x20 exit pupil is 2.5 millimeters, the results of 20 divided by 8. If all the other specs are the same, the 7x50 will have a brighter image than the 8x20. The ideal exit pupil diameter depends on your application. Large exit pupils are an advantage in low light conditions. Most compact binoculars with smaller exit pupils are sufficient for the daytime, but quickly degrade as the amount of light decreases. When it comes to the big picture, your landscape is called the field of view or FOV. This is the horizontal width of the image you can see at a given distance. In binocular specifications, it usually is expressed as the number of feet at 1,000 yards. It is also expressed in degrees, as in angles, known as the real field of view. The higher the magnification, the narrower the real field of view will be. To convert the angle into linear form, or feet, simply multiply the angle by 52.5. So, if the angle of a seven times magnification is seven degrees, then you take seven times 52.5 to get a real field of view of 367 feet. Now that you have a handle on exit pupils and field of view, we could move on to interpupillary distance or IPD. Binocular barrels rotate around a hinge so the user can line up the eyepieces with their eye pupils. Normally expressed in millimeters, the IPD measures the distance between the centers of a binocular's two eyepieces and the distance between the centers of a user's eye pupils. When the IPD on a binocular is correctly set, you will see one circle in the viewing area, not two as Hollywood often incorrectly depicts. Full-size binoculars work well with the majority of people. Since compact double hinge binoculars generally have a narrower IPD, they work well for anyone who has a very narrow IPD, such as a child. Fujinon binoculars have a typical interpupillary distance of 53 to 74 millimeters, depending on model. Before we move on, I want to quickly address those of you who wear eyeglasses. Every binocular has what's called eye relief. This is the distance between the eyepiece and your eyes, where you can obtain a full field of view, and it only affects people who wear eyeglasses. If the eye relief is insufficient or short, vignetting will occur around the edges of those who wear eyeglasses. More specifically, binoculars with eye relief of 10 to 12 millimeters typically won't allow eyeglass wearers to get the full field of view. On average, you'll need at least 15 millimeters of eye relief. Fujinon binoculars have eye reliefs that range from 15 to 23 millimeters, depending on model and magnification. It's a good idea to test out any pair of binoculars with your eyeglasses to determine if the eye relief is sufficient. There is one final key aspect to binocular lenses, and that's apparent field of view. This is the angle your eye would move through if you looked at one edge of the field and scanned over to the opposite edge. To get the value of the apparent field of view, simply multiply the magnification by the real field of view. For example, if the magnification is seven times, and the real field of view is seven degrees, multiply seven by seven, and the apparent field of view is 49 degrees. The rule of thumb is that if the apparent field of view is more than 62 degrees, 
this is considered to be a wide-angle binocular. Now, you're one step closer to being able to choose the best binoculars for you. Be sure to tune in to our final and most important video on coatings in this educational series. For more information on Fujinon binoculars and other optical devices, go to fujinon.com or fujifilmusa.com.